director, Dr. Miller. written and actually went to the AG's office. Attorney General is the one that wrote the rules and regulation <laughs> concerning about collaborative practice. Does anybody know what that means, collaborative practice act? Right? Okay. It only pertains to two, two disciplines at this point. It's uh, PAs and clinical psychologists who have prescriptive authority. Oh, okay. Okay, they can prescribe uh, medications under uh, supervision. <laughs> Supervision by an MD? Uh, so it's yeah. not as collaborative, it's not totally supervision. But the requirement, this is from two fronts, the board by law as well as being governed by public health. Because okay. in, order, in order for you to prescribe, you have to register, get a registration with public health, environmental health, uh, drug control, substance program in order to do that. And then go pass through the, all the boards. So the rules and regs concern about prescriptive authority for clinical psychologists is separate from PA in some sense. So that this one, if you take a look, I think it's the first page of the back. That was uh, formatted actually by Attorney General Dave Highsmith. And then also the forms was developed to make it easier, you know, I guess we have to develop a whole bunch of forms so that people would you know being uniform, you know. So this so you have to write down what your scope of practice is. You know. Well, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just curious, and I'm sure you really okay, but I know that mental health is a big push for yes. psychologists to be having prescription right. rights, and that's the only reason why I'm, I'm curious, because that directly impacts the people I work with, um, the consumers I work with, so I was, as you're talking about it, um, I know they're trying to get someone from New Mexico who already has pres prescription rights from New Mexico that we're trying to get on but board. But you still have to apply to Guam. Like, and then they have to go this. through the different boards to approve Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is the thing. Actually, all the, all the practicing psychologists, they have this already way ahead of them. They, I'm know, sure already. So they say, oh, I don't know. That was sent off time ago. People don't read. Okay. okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, this, this is the forms that was developed and this went through with the Attorney General's office. So it's, it's clearer than it is right now. There is no forms. Um, so it's based on the current law. Uh, so if you know if you have any question about it, this went through actually the psychologist last year, actually last year. So like I, again, I said the purpose of this public hearing is to rehash because there's certain procedural thing that uh, that I want to take responsibility. I didn't send to the AG office. A whole bunch of stuff like records of the hearing and the people present. You know, so we have to, to write down all the names of people. Um, you have names of all the people when you do the minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So any other question? Because we, the, the basic thing is that we wanted to make things easier for the applicants as well as licensees so that everything is uniform, not somebody's different from the others. But of course, some discipline have to be a little bit different because they're very concentrated in their own discipline. So that's being brought about. So, um, I have no a question, question about the Collaborative Practice Act. Um, do So it's up to the clinical psychologist or the other um, the other division to go forth with the practice act to register to prescribe drugs or is it um, like how does how does one go about that do they have to take a test I don't understand the question if a clinical psychologist for the collaborative practice act wants to prescribe medication how would they go about doing the registry? Do they take a test and pass or? No, you have to go to school first and after that then you fill out the forms. Okay, so then, so there's only two divisions that could be, that could prescribe medication without the, like being a psychiatrist for example or having, you know. Just just, 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 only the, let me just say this again with um, physician assistant and clinical psychologists, according to the law, is uh, authorized to prescribe medications. But it is very clear, and you have to write down what it is, and it passed through the three boards, medical board, as well as the pharmacy board. Yeah. Okay. But is that up to the person to do that, the individual? Of course, you have to submit the application. Okay. How do we know who you are? So it's based upon like what need to prescribe medication, or like I can any? I'm, are you a clinical psychologist? No, I'm asking because you you well, you I, are. We just already explained what it is. We don't. I, I don't know what the question is. Well, because you said that you need to go to schooling. Yes. To do all this stuff. So, if since you're a clinical psychologist, did you have to do the collaborative practice act? No. It, is a choice. Okay, not, that's what I was asking. If it was a well, choice for the person. This. Not all clinical psychologists have prescriptive authority. They have to go to the Collaborative Practice Act to get that prescriptive authority. And they have to meet certain requirements to to have that authority to prescribe it. If they don't meet the requirements in terms of education training, then they're, they're not going to be allowed to prescribe medication, even though they're clinical psychologists. So it's okay. not enough just to be a clinical psychologist and you can prescribe medication. It goes beyond being just a clinical psychologist. You have to have the appropriate training and, and then, certification and pass the test. And then the certain departments that receive that application approve it? So our yes. board, the medical yes. board, the pharmacy board, and public health. Yes, you have to get their registration. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've even had PAs who apply for licensure but don't get the CPA. But they might just be doing that. They're usually a little bit different from Yeah. So, um, Nettie, can I ask a question? Why haven't complaints against the professional veterinarian field has not been discussed in the board meeting? I mean, we're not here to talk about uh, complaints or anything other than this. We're here only on the, the agenda is only pertaining to these. Um, okay. Actually, I also, um, last week, I sent in a request for a meeting, and I don't think that was um, entertained during your... It's not being entertained. It's because it has to go through each lawyer. So it has, in fact, why would a representative of the person that you talked about. So that has to be between the the, uh, the the attorney and the, attorney, the assistant attorney general, our legal counsel. So if any question, please refer to Mr. Why would it have to go through legal counsel if you're the director? If you guys are the... But don't you deal with the practitioner directly, not the AG's well, office? If hire a lawyer, you have to submit everything to a lawyer. Oh. So if someone, if there's a complaint against the professional, then um, would that have to, why would that have to automatically go towards the AG if you guys have direct oversight? Because the AGs are 